In our study of radioactive decay in chapter 31, we discussed how a radioactive parent nucleus disintegrates spontaneously into a daughter nucleus. It is also possible to bring about, or induce, the disintegration of a stable nucleus by striking it with another nucleus, an atomic or subatomic particle, or a gamma ray photon. A nuclear reaction is said to occur whenever an incident nucleus, particle, or photon causes a change to occur in a target nucleus. In 1919, Ernest Rutherford observed that when an alpha particle strikes a nitrogen nucleus, an oxygen nucleus and a proton are produced, as we see here. This nuclear reaction is written as follows. Before the collision, there is an alpha particle, or helium nucleus, and a nitrogen-14 nucleus. They collide, or interact, which results in an oxygen-17 nucleus plus a proton, or hydrogen nucleus. Because the incident alpha particle induces the transmutation of nitrogen into oxygen, this reaction is an example of an induced nuclear transmutation. Nuclear reactions are often written in a shorthand form. For example, the reaction above is designated by the following. The first and last symbols represent the initial and final nuclei respectively. The symbols within the parentheses denote the incident alpha particle on the left and the small emitted particle or proton on the right. Here we list some of the other induced nuclear transmutations together with the equivalent shorthand notations. Converting from the conventional to the shorthand method in the first reaction, the incoming and outgoing small particles map to the parentheses, left and right, respectively. The initial nucleus is on the left, and the final nucleus is on the right. Induced nuclear reactions, like the radioactive decay process, obey the conservation laws of physics. Each of these laws deals with a property that does not change during a process, and is said to be conserved, including energy mass, linear momentum, angular momentum, electric charge, and nucleon number. The last two are especially applicable to nuclear reactions. For instance, consider the following induced nuclear reaction. A neutron strikes a boron-10 nucleus. As a result, an unknown nucleus X with atomic number Z and nucleon number A is produced, along with an alpha particle. We can use the conservation of charge and nucleon number to identify the unknown nucleus produced. Since the total electric charge of the nucleons is conserved, we can set the total number of protons before the reaction equal to the total number after the reaction. So, 0 plus 5 equals Z plus 2. Since the total number of nucleons is conserved, we can set the total number before the reaction equal to the total number after the reaction. Therefore, 1 plus 10 equals A plus 4. From these two equations, we get Z equals 3 and A equals 7, and our unknown nucleus is identified as lithium-7. Induced nuclear transmutations can be used to produce isotopes that are not found naturally. In 1934, Enrico Fermi suggested a method for producing elements with atomic numbers greater than 92, which is that of uranium. Such elements include neptunium, with Z equal 93, plutonium, with Z equal 94, americium, with Z equal 95, and so on, and these are known as transuranium elements, and none occurs naturally. They are created in a nuclear reaction between a suitably chosen lighter element and a small incident particle, usually a neutron or an alpha particle. Here we show a reaction that produces plutonium with Z equal 94 from uranium with Z equal 92. The process starts when a neutron is captured by an uranium-238 nucleus, producing uranium-239 and a gamma ray. The uranium-239 nucleus is radioactive and decays with a half-life of 23.5 minutes into neptunium-239. Neptunium is also radioactive and disintegrates with a half-life of 2.4 days into plutonium-239. Plutonium is the final product and has a half-life of 24,100 years. The neutrons that participate in nuclear reactions can have kinetic energies that cover a wide range. In particular, those that have a kinetic energy of about 0.04 electron volts or less are called thermal neutrons. The name derives from the fact that such a relatively small kinetic energy is comparable to the average translational kinetic energy of a molecule in an ideal gas at room temperature. These slow-moving neutrons are very important in certain nuclear reactions, including fission chain reactions, as we will soon see.